Lower crossed syndrome is a common postural dysfunction that leads to low back pain, tight hip flexors, and weak glutes. If you or your patients experience anterior pelvic tilt, this video is for you. In this episode, we'll cover everything you need to assess and diagnose using Jonda's principles. Lower crossed syndrome occurs due to muscle imbalances in the lower body. The tight group of muscles are hip flexors, iliopsoas, rectus femoris, and lumbar erector spinae. While the weak inhibited muscles are gluteus maximus and medius, deep core stabilizers, these imbalances create the characteristic anterior pelvic tilt, excessive lumbar curve, and weak core activation seen in lower cross syndrome. Symptoms include chronic lower back pain, hip stiffness, and weak glutes leading to poor squat, tight hamstrings, and posterior fascia. If you look at the biomechanics, the line of gravity passes more posteriorly in hyperlordotic spine. This can lead to complications such as disc herniation, hip impingement, and knee pain. Now, let's go step-by-step step through a comprehensive lower cross syndrome assessment. Step one is the postural observation. Here we are going to check for lumbar hyperlordosis and anterior pelvic tilt. The second step of assessment includes the hip mobility testing. For testing the hip mobility, we are going to perform two special tests. These are Thomas test and the Ely's test. These tests tell us about the hip mobility and if they are positive, it means lower cross syndrome might be the diagnosis. The third step of assessment includes the core stability testing. This is again tested by the plank test and the single leg bridge test. These tests assess the deep core muscles, which provide stability. If the individual is unable to perform these, it means stability is compromised. The fourth step is the functional movement screening. This involves the overhead squat test and the step-down test. In overhead squat test, the pelvic alignment and hyperlordosis is observed in different planes in a semi-squat position. While in the step-down test, stability is while stepping down is noted. This is to check the glute strength. These tests will help pinpoint the exact muscular imbalances contributing to lower cross syndrome. And one should not miss evaluating the red flag signs in the patient. If any of these are present, consider imaging or specialist referral. So that was all about this episode. In the next one, we are going to see the full rehabilitation program to treat lower cross syndrome. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.